You are listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. Sports Coma with Big Q and the Guy. We have intense, entertaining, and educated sport talk from your favorite sports family. I'm Big Q, and tonight we're riding solo. DC couldn't make it, so big shout out to DC as we're going to uh, ride on into it. Episode 194 on Sports Coma. That's right, episode 194. Sports Coma, doing big things, man, reaching a lot of people across the globe, across the spear, across the plane, you know, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> we make it our way through. But anyway, let's get into the show, man, and uh, we're going to be talking about today on uh, episode 194 of the Sports Coma. We're going to cover the Saints, you know, and first of all, before we get started in talking about the Saints, I like to give... A big shout out to all the terrific and great supporters of the sports coma. You know, I'm just going to be honest with you. All of the supporters, the sharers, the new people that continue to uh, subscribe via social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can find all those links in the description section of this video or this uh, audio report. And of, of course, join our Facebook and Twitter pages. Of course, we always beam out fresh new Saints news hot off the presses. So you don't have to go scrambling around and looking for it, fellas. That's one less things and, and latest that y'all don't have to worry about. Join the Sports Coma Facebook or Twitter feed and you get all the latest sports stories on the Saints, the Pelicans, boxing news. We blast it out for you. So, yes, but thank you. Once again, to all the donators, to all of the, the listeners of the show, thank you very much. Wouldn't be able to do it without you. Now, in today's episode 194, we're going to cover a lot. We're going to talk about a lot in today's episode here on the Sports Coma. A lot of stuff's been shaking. A lot of things been uh, shaking for, new, uh, for the Saints. Uh, we're talking about a couple of acquisitions uh, the Saints have made, a couple of releases the Saints have made. You know, we had a few things that happened with New Orleans uh, recently. And of course, you know, I hear a lot. I hear a lot of chatter. You guys probably hear it too. All the who that's out there in the, the who that multiverse. Been hearing a lot of different things. You know, hearing about the Saints and a lot of people on our jock now. You know, the, the Saints administration, Jeff Ireland, Sean Payton, Mickey, Mickey Loomis. All these guys have been making some real tremendous moves as of late, and and solidifying this team. We're as we're a very deep team. To be quite honest with you, I was looking at the unofficial depth chart of the New Orleans Saints. It has uh, is unofficial. Of course, you can Google that unofficial depth chart and you can see it um, as well. We probably have we'll have uh, a picture of it here up on the screen during a video report. But to be quite honest with you, we're pretty deep, man, all across the board, to be honest with you. Saints looking good, you know, and some of the positions, of course, we had a few people say linebacker was a weakness. We had a couple of people said tight end was a position. Of course, I was the one that said tight end was a weak position. Now, I know they got Benjamin Watson. There. I know about Josh Hill. I know about who, man. I know about the three guys that they got, uh, the undrafted guys. I like Yelda. I like Saren, uh, whatever the man name is from West Virginia, Saren A or whatever it is, Saren A or whatever his name is. Uh, but the other big guy from Minnesota, they look like they're going to convert him to an offensive lineman. So that's a unique thing to have a guy that's almost seven feet tall playing offensive lineman. That's a pretty big bet. But we deep. We very deep. The last show we talked about a lot of prospects. And this show we're going to talk about a few prospects. Of course, this is going to be a 30-minute show. You know, we're going to hit you with the news and notes. 
and uh, let you know what time it is, what's going on here in the, in the sports comas, uh, Saints world. A lot of stuff. We're going to start it off by speaking about the fact that linebacker Mike Malty. Now, Mike Malty, man, a lot of people like Mike Malty, and rightfully so. Mike Malty is one of the sports coma's favorite guys. Uh, you know, he got released. You know, he was released last year, I believe it was, because he had a, a situation uh, uh, dealing with his stomach. I think it was also colitis. I think it was that he had dealt with, and he had that comeback, you know, from last year. He had the surgeries and all that, and he battled back, man. Uh, Ulcerative colitis is what it is. And he spent a couple seasons with the Vikings. And then the last three with the Saints, of course, Mike Maltese father played with the Saints. So that was a terrific to have him here. And he not only was he just a namesake, but Mike Malty was an excellent special teamer. He was a guy that a lot of people looked up to. He was a special teams captain, by the way. So he wasn't just out there collecting a check. This guy really played his butt off out there and gave the Saints everything they got. Well, like they say, all things come to an end and they release Mike Malty. Now, who knows? They might bring him back at a later date. You know, they've done this before. You know, hopefully he'll get an opportunity to come back. Hopefully this is not the end. It's still very much early to say, oh, well, they released him. He might not be back. You never know what could happen. So just keep that in mind. And a shout out to Mike Malty and his family, man. Uh, keep your, uh, I think that I, I don't think it's the end. I could be wrong, but I think the Saints have done this before where they let guys go and then later on they come back. So we'll see. Uh, also, they released Mike Malty and they added undrafted wide receiver Eldridge Massington from UCLA. Uh, so they brought him in and then they waived offensive lineman John Theus from injury reserve. So they waived him to injury reserve and now they're waving him from injury reserve. So he might be very well Oscar La vista so outside of that, but I mean, you know, the Mike Malty thing is really uh, a really tough thing. Not to mention Adam Big Hill. He's another guy that the Saints released. Adam Big Hill, special teams ace, a uh, guy out of Canada, played his butt off, earned his role. And 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 um, I really think, you know, he played in special teams last year. I wish I would have seen more of him because I knew I remember, the, but the Saints been so deep at the linebacker position last year with uh, some of them guys playing out of their minds. Just a shame to see Adam Big Hill, big part of the special teams as well, uh, to see him hasta la vista. Uh, perhaps, like I said, he might, who knows, he might be one of those guys that come back. It's very early uh, right now, you know, and the Saints could very well just be uh, just filling around trying to get certain things. But you never know. You can, you never know. You never know with, with some of these stuff. But anyway, a uh, big shout out to Adam Big Hill. He's also one of the sports coma's favorites. Uh, as well and we wish you uh, much luck moving ahead my friend okay going further the Saints also made uh, some acquisitions as well besides releasing a few guys Uh, the Saints were able to pick up Josh Laribas now Laribas played with the Saints he was with them uh, in 2017 Uh, uh, you know of course last year he appeared in 16 games for him but mostly at a backup role now to be quite honest with you Josh Laribas is a guy, he got some experience. He played for the Washington Redskins before that. But, of course, it was reported today uh, by, uh, B- by ESPN that he's returning to New Orleans. Now, uh, he was he signed with Philadelphia last uh, – he signed with Philadelphia uh, this season, but then was released this month. So the Saints seen him out there and said, you know what? We could use a guy, uh, you know, of Josh Laribas personage. You know, he comes in, the guy could play the guard, he could play center for us. He's a veteran guy, so we could trust him a little bit. He played for us, he's familiar with our schemes, so why not bring him in? So, like I said, you look at the Saints depth chart, man. You look at the depth chart, and I'm going to just be honest with you. I, I'm just, I, I just love it, you know? I, I just love what I see, you know? Because you can hear about all these signings, you can say, well, hey, man, guess what? The Saints signed this guy, that guy's like, hold on, didn't you have a guy already? Didn't we just get Bush ride? Didn't we get uh, Jermon Bush ride for that position? Didn't we uh, bring uh, Will Clapp in for that position? Didn't we still have Cameron Tom? Now, some of these guys, like Cameron Tom, and, you know, we don't mention these guys. And it's almost kind of a backhand insult. It is, actually. When you hear uh you know them say yo we got a great offensive line but we don't have no depth 
<laughs> like none of them guys are not busting their ass every day uh, trying to improve a learning scheme and in and out. That's kind of insulting. So we'll make sure we try not to do that. Just like, OK, well, we got four wide receivers and nobody else. You know, that's like a backhand slap to Traven Durrell, who we really like. That's a backhand slap to a few of those guys, Carr and the rest of them, that's really playing their butts off to try to make a dent and make this team. So uh, we'll be kind of mindful of not doing that, you know, in the, in the near future. But anyway, you know, Josh Laribas, he's here now. He's a Saint. Uh, the Saints bring him back to the fold. He'll get in the mix with the rest of those guys. Of course, they do have a full behind uh, him, of course, is – is 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 Jermaine Bushrod and the rest of those guys. So outside of that, you know, it's a lot of different things that the team has to do to try to get itself in the position so that it can be a powerhouse. So I just think that a lot of the stuff that we do as a team, pardon me on that. Uh, I get a mark for that for having my cell phone on. <laughs> I thought I turned it off, but anyway, uh, that's the thing. You look at the offensive line. And the Saints did add, don't forget Michael Ola. They signed him. And we're going to get to that news, too, that they did bring in a couple of vets from the rookie minicamp. They had a few of them tried out. And to the surprise, the Saints signed a couple of those guys and added them to the team. Michael Ola is one of those guys who is an offensive lineman. You had Will Clapp. You got Jermaine Bushrod. You got you, you have Rick Leonard. You transfer, you take Nate uh, Wozniak and transfer form him into an offensive lineman. And now you have Josh Laribas. You still have Landon Turner, uh, Turner. You got Andrew Tiller. You got Cameron Tom. You still have Jack Allen. I thought they released Jack Allen, but he's showing up on many rosters here. Dennis Corey Helms. So what I'm saying is just breaching, just talking about the offensive line right now, that New Orleans man to me, very, very deep offensive line. Very deep offensive line. And I'm loving it. I'm going to be honest with you. And I'm loving it. Because they realized how really effective and good this offensive line was with Drew Brees last year and protecting him. It also not only protected Drew Brees very well so he can have an exemplary year. It, they also were able to run the ball and put up those two terrific running backs and Elvin Kamara and Mark Ingram last year that were the most, you know, the best tandem running backs ever in NFL history. And that's saying a lot when you have all the great hall of famer guys that's been out there, you know, you know, so it's just awesome to see that the Saints putting so much emphasis on the depth around the team. And like I said, now if you, you got a lot of fans, we have a lot of fans out there that listen to the show, been following this, the sports cone, been following the Saints for a very long time. You tell me what you think. Have you ever seen the Saints this deep before? Have you ever uh, th- this team is way deeper than the Super Bowl team? I'm talking depth wise. You, you see what I'm saying? This team is very deep. You look at that. I mean, and not just old guys, but a mix of young guys, good, good, good backups and re- potentially really solid rookie young guys as well to fill in the slate. So even with the quarterback position we covered in the previous show with J.T. Uh, Barrett and the rest of those guys is coming out here to try out. The Saints are really, truly serious, seriously a contender. And it must mean something because now you hear the, the over and under on win totals with the Saints and people picking them out of Vegas and other places saying that the Saints have serious Super Bowl firepower. And a lot of people think the Saints will reach the Super Bowl. Well, that's good and bad to me because I don't really, I mean, you know, most of the times, when did the last time that those guys ever pick us to win anything? So I don't give a damn what they think. As long as we got the diehard Saints fans down here that know what the hell they team doing to put to put things together, that's all the hell I care about. I don't care about those people out there uh, tweaking numbers and all that nonsense. You can keep that garbage to yourself. But anyway, man, I'm loving it, man. I'm loving it. I love the fact that the Saints have depth in every position, including running back to absorb with the four games loss of Mark Ingram. And the fact that Sean Payton said that he might take a look at a guy like Adrian Peterson or just sit back and give guys like Jonathan Williams an opportunity to play who's no slouch. Jonathan, you might have not heard of Jonathan Williams, the running back uh, the guy from Buffalo, but he's not he's not a slouch. You know, so we got talent. But anyway, we're going to talk about the rest of the news uh, dealing with the Saints on the other side of the break. And also, we got some interesting topics we're going to break down here. We're going to fill out uh, on the other side of the break. So, you listening to the Sports Coma. Big Q and the guys. Stick with us. Uh, uh. 
What's up, sports world? It's Big Q from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. I'm talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics, and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest downloadable mixtapes. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to the poshlifestyle.com. That's the posh lifestyle. Life spell with a Y. L Y F E style.com. Put in the sports coma for the 10% discount on your purchase. It's a win-win. So get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans I View. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal. Covering everything Pelicans. Attention everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts. With statistical analysis from G Balance. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans dash I dash View. Wow, what a huge honor it is to be named NBA 2K18 Legend Edition Cover Athlete. I really wouldn't be here without the guidance, love, and support of my mom and dad. Also, I'd like to thank my coaches, both college and professional. But most of all, I'd like to thank Kobe Bryant. He was the NBA 2K Legend Cover Athlete first. He's so awesome and handsome and has really nice natural teeth. Wait, what? I'll be looking at his teeth. This ain't over, Kobe. Payback's gonna be fun. NBA fans, NBA League Pass is your ticket to all of this season's action. Every exciting matchup. Every incredible shot. Every big moment, every game live and on demand in HD quality on every type of device, wherever you are, whenever you want. NBA League Pass has you covered. Sign up today. Follow the Sports Home on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Welcome back to the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys, and we're talking about the Saints. In this 30-minute podcast, we're hitting you with the Saints' latest news. In the first segment, we covered pretty much a few things. In this segment, we'll talk about other moves and shaking, a little shaking and baking. Saints doing the Saints signed, of course, uh, four players that tried out during the rookie minicamp, veteran defensive tackle Jay Bromley, big defensive tackle. Uh, played for the New York Giants, impressed the Saints. And the truth be known that the Saints do have a a spot at the backup defensive tackle position. You got Sheldon Rankins, Tyler Davidson. And I don't anticipate the Saints re-signing Tyler Davidson. He's been a, g- a good guy here. I mean, a, a damn good defensive tackle. But, you know, when they tried to sign and and Sue, you know, Sue was obviously not going to be a reserve. He was going to obviously start, start next to Sheldon Rankin. So I've seen the Saints will say, hey, man, we need to improve next. Put somebody next to Sheldon Rankins who can push, you know, and perhaps. And, and we've seen Daniel and Yamada. He seems to progressing, progressing at a fast rate. And I would not be surprised if on Yamada beats out Tyler Davidson in, in, in camp to take that defensive tackle spot. I think the line would be a lot more effective with Onyemata because he is a bull inside and I think him next to Sheldon Rankins you got to double somebody and of course the Davenport on outside with Cam Jordan watch out anyway veteran defensive tackle Jay Bromley seems to be a guy that the Saints can tap to come behind uh, Sheldon Rankins and Daniel Onyemata to give him maybe that fourth defensive tackle guy he's a veteran he'll mix well in there 
but they have a lot of stiff competition at the defensive tackle spot, not to shed any light. They had, they brought in uh, Henry Mondu, you know him from Oreg, from the Ducks. You also have Woodrow Hamilton, who was here with the Saints last year. He was injured, though, in preseason, didn't play a lick a bit. Devereaux Lawrence is there. And, of course, the Saints get – they did take South Carolina game cock defensive tackle Taylor Stallworth. Now, Stallworth, a lot of people like him, including myself, uh, to, to be that guy because he has a very high motor. He's very strong. And he's a guy that fits well in a rotation. If you want to bring somebody off the bench, you need somebody that's going to come in with a bull mentality behind on your Mata and Tyler Davidson and Sheldon Rankins. Why not that guy? So it's going to be a stiff competition for Jay Bromley, but he makes it. Also, Michael Ola. We talked about Michael Ola early in his spots where he has some competition with a few guys. Of course, the Saints uh, add, adding, adding, adding to keep that offensive line up. And I'm very impressed with what I'm seeing from the Saints. Saints also signed undrafted rookie Keyshawn Freeman and undrafted rookie fullback Ryan Juracek. Now, big shout out to DC on this. He talked about fullback being a weak spot for the Saints. The Saints did add a fullback, Ryan Juracek, to compete with Zach Lyon. I'm not expecting Juracek to blow Zach Lyon out. That's a tough feat, an uphill battle, unless this guy just flattens, you know, flattens whoever he's taking on in blocks. It's going to be a stiff competition for him to knock him out. But, you know, anything's possible. And, of course, we did. Uh, talk about the fact the Saints needed to make room for signing these guys so they released Adam Big Hill former Canadian football standout he appeared in three games for the Saints last year and they also released offensive line Durante Boulder from Ole Miss and defensive backs Bradley Sylvie and Ricky Jefferson from LSU sorry to see Ricky Jefferson go I was really hoping to him for him to stick around but man the safeties are so deep this year and it's going to be interesting to see exactly I mean, the, the Saints' safeties is just, I mean, besides the starters of Marcus Williams and Vine Bell, I mean, you still got Kurt, uh, 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 Kurt Coleman, who they signed. You know, if Coleman's there as well, then you have Chris Banjo, the special team standout. Natrell Jamison, they got, they got pinched in at safety, but I think he'll probably be more of a corner than anybody. But, I, I mean, safeties, you know, it's, it's, the, it's a very tough world, and Ricky Jefferson didn't make it. So, peace, uh, shout out, and good fortune to all those guys who didn't quite make it to the next step. Now, moving forward, we talked about, uh, you know, a few of the things that happened with the Saints in terms of, you know, their running back situation. We talked about that earlier on a few podcasts. The funny thing about it is that the Saints didn't seem to want to go in, you know, out into the free agency market and pick up a sturdy veteran, even though word on the street, we heard rumors circulating around about uh, Murray, uh, DeMarco Murray, we also heard rumors circulating around guys like Adrian Peterson, who actually made a trip down here for whatever reason. Uh, and also the fact that he did make mention in an article that he would want, love to come back and play for the Saints for a handful of games. Uh, you know, he's familiar. He's, he was in camp and it would be a good fit to have a guy like Adrian Peterson to come around here this time and play. And it'll be interesting to see uh, Adrian Peterson and Elvin Kamara to some. Wouldn't that be awesome? I don't know. Nothing's happened on that deal. But anyway, let's not crap on some of the guys they have coming behind them. And I mean, some of these running backs that that's coming behind them. Uh, of course, you have Daniel Lasko, who just had a really severe injury. He's coming back. We don't know how effective he's going to be after having that terrible injury. Of course, Boston Scott, the six round draft pick. A lot of people want to see what Boston Scott has. I'm going to tell you what. Boston Scott is going to get a lot of playing time because Sean Payton has plays and packages for him right now right now he has plays and packages for mr bo uh scott mr boston scott he has plenty of work for him so i'm expecting to see a lot of bo scott uh work being put in of course there's trey Edmonds who was here last year who really impressed he was the true nfl long shot he was a guy that a lot of people like both his brothers got drafted in the first round uh, this year as well and all three of them in the NFL at the same time that's stupendous you know what I'm saying and then we'll see what he can do and then there's Jonathan Williams the Saints picked this guy up last year from the Buffalo Bills and he was a pretty tough running back at Arkansas he got drafted by Buffalo had didn't play that much with Buffalo obviously there's you know a guy up there by the name of LaShawn McCoy who doesn't like <laughs> who pretty much uh, gets a lot of bend but 
uh, Williams didn't get a lot of opportunity. The Saints seen something special in him, decided to bring him in. Now, he's a hard north-south runner who can finish runs, and I love seeing those type of dudes. It kind of remind me of like a guy like Mike Bell or Chris Ivory. You know, hard-hitting guys like that. The Saints, we just love that type of ferocity from the running back position. Even Deuce McAllister had it before he got broken up. But anyway, that's some of the the, the, the stories that we done covered tonight dealing with the sports cone. We got a handful of minutes uh, left in the show for this 30 minute special. And I wanted to kind of talk to you guys about a few players on the team that I don't, I like, let, you know, and you give you, you, you guys give your takes on who do you think these guys won't be. I want to ask you to tell me five guys, of course, put it down in the, the uh, comment section. Give me five saint guys who will not make it. You know, five games. Be be honest with me. Don't give me some bottom of the depth chart guys and say, well, here go five guys. You told me to give you five. No, man. Really look at the roster. Matter of fact, you can go on uh, ourlads.com. That's uh, the name of the uh, site. Google it, ourlads.com. They have an unofficial depth chart there uh, that shows you all of the players that's on the Saints currently. You know, it's, of course, unofficial. But out of all those guys, I want you guys to tell me who you believe. You know, give me, uh, you know what? I, I'm not going to even force you to give me five. Give me three. Give me three guys who you think are not going to make the Saints team, you know, this year, who who not going to make it to the regular roster, you know, who might be a surprise camp. You know, there's always guys that don't, that's on the bubble that don't make it. We can't predict who, which guys are going to be injured, injured. You know, we're not going to do that. But I want you guys to tell me, give me three of them. Give me three guys, one, two, three, that will not make this, the the Saints team, and and make sure they like names that you know we know we we will know and say, well, damn, why wow, that's kind of a shocker, uh, on a bubble guy that won't make the team. Anyway, let me give you my three. If you agree with me, fine. If you disagree, that's still fine. Just give your three and chime in, interact with me at the sports coma here, and give me three guys who. I, I, what you think that won't make the team. I'm going to give you my three before we, before I end the show in a few minutes. And I'm going to start mine off. This ain't in any particular order, but I'm going to start off by giving you uh, one guy. And I, and I think that the signings of a few dis- defensive linemen kind of showed that the Saints are at the end of their string with this guy. And they're giving him every opportunity to be a major player in the matrix. But with the acquisitions, the re-signing of a guy like Alex Okafor with the, the not only the drafting, but the moving up using a first round draft pick to take defensive end Marcus Davenport, who's one of the purest pressures, pass rushers in the NFL draft, you know, and then, you know, then you have other guys that that have the potential to be better than this candidate that I'm speaking about. Now, you smart Saints fans out there know. And not to mention Trey Hendrickson is here, who has a higher ceiling. And there are a few interesting guys. George Johnson uh, is another guy. Al El Kadeem Muhammad's another guy. So it's a few guys. But I'm going to say this guy's name, and I hate to say this, but I don't think he's going to make it, make the team, you know, for seeing anybody get injured. Of course, if somebody injured, I think in that position, I think he'll make it. But I have to say, Uh, that Haloi Kakaha will not make the team this year. I just think that severe amount of of competition at that position. And I don't think Kakaha, I don't think, I don't think Kakaha is going to make it. You know, I just named a handful of guys. And of course you could say George Johnson is not going to make it. I understand that. But in the end, when you break it down, Haloi Kakaha to me will be a guy that probably won't make the team. Okay. Another guy that I think won't make the team as I'm running out of time here, I'm going to have to put P.J. Williams on the bubble. P.J. Williams is a guy that the Saints have been hoping and praying for to show up, and he did not showed up in, in, in pretty much none. I think a lot of these defensive backs they drafted uh, would definitely probably end up replacing him. And, of course, this is a long shot uh, player as well that I don't think will probably make the team, but Craig Robinson. I'm looking at Craig Robinson. I love Craig Robinson. But at the end of the day, do we really keep Craig Robinson with all of, with the terrific depth that linebacker that we have? Those are three interesting names. If you guys agree with me, you know, tell me what you think. Chime in on this story. 
But also, just thank you for joining me here at the Sports Coma tonight. If you like the show, continue to chef, continue to support. Go to patreon.com slash PR Media Network and donate. Thank you. Forget ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image from author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children 101 powerful children affirmations a guide to positive child self-image order your copy today thank you for listening to the pro media network who provides hours and hours of free entertainment to you and yours if you are benefiting positively from our content please donate to help us grow our platform by going to www.patreon.com slash the pro media network that's www.patreon.com slash the pro media network and support the true independent artists